Hi everybody, Red Hill Eagle here. Welcome back to the channel. It's episode 10 of A Broken Heart. It's our WCW 1998 save on TEW20. And it's the last Nitro before Super Brawl. And we open for a change with the NWO. Well, no, actually, we open with Goldberg. He's training, he's in the gym, whatever. He's on a bike, whatever it is. And the NWO come in and approach him. And they just kind of uh, get chatting to him and sort of say, look, you know, you're a big guy, you're on a winning streak, but are you really, you know, all it's cracked up to be? Are you an all-rounder? You know, what about some tag team action? You know, do you think you could cope? Do you think you could keep your streak going in a, a tag team match? How about you go find yourself a partner and you'll have a match tonight? So that's basically just to set up for tonight's main event. Goldberg got to go and find himself a partner and no doubt will be taking on two members of the NWO. Good start again, rating of 84. In the ring, we've got Kurt Hennig defending his TV title against Glacier. It's his first match. It's his first defence, sorry. His, so his first defence of the TV title. Rating 71, which is decent. Glacier is only an unimportant, and Hennig himself, I think, is only well known. So pretty pleased with 71. Decent match. He got the win in 8 minutes 10 by a pinfall with a Hennig Plex. Uh, and yeah, defence number one of the TV title. So this was just to get Hennig on the card, um, get get a title defence in there. You know, let's not forget about this title. Uh, I will be doing something with it. He is challenging for the world title at Super Brawl. So yeah, this was this was just to kind of not not completely forget about that title. Bam Bam Bigelow then makes an open challenge. He'll take on anyone. He's got the giant coming up at Super Brawl, but he needs a warm up match. And his challenge is answered by Randy Savage. So Randy Savage has accepted the challenge from Bam Bam Bigelow. Rating of 83, looking good. Pretty pleased with that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm imagining Randy Savage must have done all the work because Bam Bam Bigelow was very underwhelming. So, you know, if that had been someone who was sort of pretty decent on the mic, could have been looking at, you know, much closer to the 90s. So, yeah, this was just a set up to get this particular match on tonight's card. But before that one, We've got Booker T in singles action. It's his first singles match since losing the TV title. He takes on Saturn, who had a very good match with Bret Hart last time out. This one's a poor one. Rating of 54. Decent reaction from the crowd, but terrible wrestling. Booker T defeated Saturn in 10 minutes 38 by count out. I think this just goes to show how good Bret Hart is. You know, because we got a note in the last episode that uh, he really made Saturn look good. Um, but Booker T couldn't do the same, and Saturn's obviously pretty awful. What did he get here? 45. Booker T, running a 48 himself. Uh, yeah, disappointing with that one. We're trying to get Booker over. We will get him over. But, we're, you know, if he's not got kind of like the, the in-ring skills, we're going to really have to sort of concentrate on, well, thinking of other ways of, uh, of booking him, to be honest with you. But he does get the win in 10 minutes 38. I think I've already said this, <laughs> by count out. Gene Oakland interviews Chris Jericho, and Chris Jericho is kind of like, okay, I'm ready now. I want Flair. I want Ric Flair in the ring. Uh, last time out, Chris Jericho got a, a massive victory, uh, but he uh, over Lex Luger, but um, Buff Bagwell came down to confront Lex, and Flair came down to confront Jericho. Uh, and Buff Bagwell said, look, last week we both had beef in that main event, after that main event. You know, how about me and you team up and we take on Flair? and Luger at Super Bowl, and Chris Jericho kind of thinks about it. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Okay, there's a challenge. Tag team action if uh, Ric Flair and Lex Luger are up for it. And in a way, Chris Jericho's kind of relieved. He's like, oh, I haven't got to take on Flair on my own yet. You know, you can't. he doesn't say it, and it isn't too obvious, but there's just a hint of kind of relief in his eyes. This was just to set up that tag team match that we've got booked for Super Bowl. Rating 74. Ted DiBiase is then with his tag team clients of Scott Steiner, Rick Steiner, the Steiner brothers, and he says he's got some big news. He is expanding his client base, his portfolio. He will be taking on a new client, and that's going to be announced next week. So who will Ted DiBiase be managing from next week? Rating of 64. Basically, we've made a, a new signing. It's a pretty decent signing. Um, quite a young guy, though. So I don't want to push him too hard. And I think it's just a different way of debuting someone. Um, so, yeah, you'll, you'll find out at the next Nitro. The next episode, of course, is going to be Super Brawl. But following that, we'll have the Nitro and we'll announce, um, or Ted DiBiase will announce who his new client is. 
The Faces of Fear take on Norman Smiley and Prince Ayuki, Ayuka, uh, oh, uh, takes on some other guy. And um, decent wrestling, but a little heat. The Faces of Fear get the win in 8 minutes 54 when Ming pinned that one uh, with a double big boot. Um, I'm only being funny, of course. I mean, I, although although I, I'm honest, I, if I'm honest, I can't pronounce it. Ayuki? Yeah. Y Yeki? Okay. But it's the face of fear that get the win, and this, that's what it's all about, really. They were just taking on a couple of jobbers. I don't like treating Norman Smiley as a jobber. I, I think there's a little bit more to him, really. But we're kind of struggling for jobbers, particularly baby faces. And I, I wanted these guys to, you know, to, to take on. So what I'm probably going to do is what I normally do in TEW, and just start bringing in a few guys just for sort of three, six months at a time, just as jobbers, and sort of rotate that. Um, Ayuki was the weakest link. Struggled to keep up with everyone else's in-ring performance. Overall rating 65. And then we've got Goldberg approaching Roddy Piper. He's asking Roddy Piper to be his partner in tonight's main event. You know, Goldberg said, look, I want someone with an experienced head. You know, tag team action probably isn't my strongest point. I, I don't doubt my ability. But, yeah, I want someone with a little bit more of an experienced head. Um, and Roddy Piper's like, I, I can't team up with someone like you i mean you're a monster you're a beast your your, your wrestling uh, is completely different to mine the way the way you present yourself the way you you know your your technique is just completely different to mine but goldberg sort of convinces him he says look we're going to be taking on two members of the nwa this is a great opportunity so piper agrees um rating of 82 uh yeah pleased with that um body piper of course was excellent without, uh, working without a script excellent stuff and even um, even Goldberg improvised well. I'm surprised about that one, actually. Then Monsoon asks Liz, asks Elizabeth, whose corner will she be in at the tag team match at Super Brawl? Will she be in the corner with Buff Bagwell and Chris Jericho or Lex Luger and Ric Flair? And before she can kind of get a chance to say anything, because her entertainment skills aren't that great, Buff Bagwell appears... And he's basically assuming, you know, she's going to be in my corner. Of course she's going to be in my corner. Why, you know, why isn't she going to go with Lex? I mean, you know, we, we, we had dinner last night. We had a great time. You know, we're, we're getting on. We're really good friends. You know, the things are, things are looking good. You know, he gives a little wink to the camera. But Liz is kind of like showing a few faces like, you know, well, I don't think it went that well, actually. You know, hang on. Hold on a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, but, but, you know, before she could sort of, um, sort of say anything, because as I say, her entertainment and microphone skills are pretty awful. So tried to avoid her sort of saying anything in this segment. Rating of 66. Yeah, so before she can sort of get any words out, Buff Bagwell just, uh, you know, just walks off and, yeah, you know, Liz is mine. She'll be in my corner. And then we've got the Bam Bam Bigelow Randy Savage match. 79, pleased with that. In a good match, Bam Bam Bigelow defeated Randy Savage in 13 minutes 43 by pinfall with a diving headbutt. So still trying to push Bam Bam to some extent. And Savage probably haven't had him wrestle for a good couple of weeks. So wanted to get this match on the card. Savage didn't like losing, so I had to keep him strong. But this, Bam Bam Bigelow and Randy Savage have great chemistry. Um, let's keep that in our back pocket. Might have to do something with that in the future. But yeah, great victory for Bam Bam Bigelow. Hopefully he's going to get some pop from that. But then afterwards, we kind of go to a break and then we come back. And in the locker room, we've got uh, Sting and Bret Hart. Uh, the other members of the alliance are kind of consoling Savage. You know, Savage is like really annoyed at the loss. You know, oh, maybe I haven't got it anymore. I'm getting, you know, I'm turning, I'm getting, becoming an old man. You know, I just, how did I lose that match? And the other guys, just, look, these things happen. You can't win every match. You know, just, just calm down. Bam and Bigelow's a big guy. He's an up and comer. He's got a lot of momentum going for him. You've got a lot on your mind at the moment. You know, the NWO and all that. You know, just, just, it was just one of those things. This was just to get, the rest of the alliance on the card. I, and although I, I'm kind of doing a lot with them, I'm kind of not, if you know what I mean. They're obviously up against the NWO, and it's like the main storyline of our of our save at the moment, but don't kind of use them enough. So, yeah, just wanting to get them all on the card, really. But a rating of 80 gives us another good score. Lots of green there. like to see it. And then we've got Gorilla Monsoon again, our kind of mole... And he says, you know, he'll be doing all he can to find out who Ted DiBiase's new client is. You know, hopefully I can find out before next week's Nitro. And I'm doing my best. I'm trying to, you know, I'm getting hold of a few different contacts of mine and, you know, tapping some people up, see if anyone's got any news. 
I, I have heard that it's it's someone who's a great talent, very good in ring, you know, maybe a little bit rough around the edges, perhaps still regarded as a bit of a rookie, but you know, he's he's got potential, but I still I still haven't got a name. Still don't quite know who it is yet. Rating of sixty one. Eddie Guerrero takes on Jim Neidhart. Yep, wanted to get Guerrero on the card. Haven't used him much. Uh, Jim Neidhart is kind of one of our sort of mid-card jobber guys at the moment. Not doing much with him. He is in a tag team as well, of course. But again, sort of lower end of the card. We've got <laughs> we've got a good five or six people that we're really trying to push. But after that, there's kind of nobody. <laughs> I We've lost Michael Wall Street. He's going to WWF. I wasn't going to pay what they were paying um, for someone who's 39 years old. I, you know, I. It would have been nice to keep him around, maybe a future road agent, but I just wasn't willing to pay what they were paying. So, um, otherwise, this probably would have been a victory over Michael Wall Street. But it's it's Jim Neidhart, and so rating a 69, Eddie Guerrero defeats Jim Neidhart in nine minutes 58 by a pinfall with a frog splash. Then our main event, rating a 70. Okay, it's still not fantastic. Bearing in mind I've got these guys here, I was really hoping for something better. In a bout that had great heat and decent wrestling, Goldberg and Roddy Piper defeated Hollywood Hogan and Sid Vicious in 13 minutes 41, when Goldberg pinned Sid Vicious with a jackhammer. So during the match we had Conan come in and attack Piper, because they're obviously feuding at the moment. So the story is really, Conan kind of came in quite early and started attacking Piper, so it's pretty much Goldberg on his own for almost the entire match up against um, Hogan and Vicious. So again, get Goldberg over, get him almost a handicap victory, almost a handicap victory, make him look strong, make him look really good. You can't sort of, I could have, I could have, I could have actually added the note to limit Roddy Piper's um, involvement. I actually forgot to add that. Yeah, I could have done, should have done, it would have made it a little bit better, probably would have given Goldberg even more of a boost. But it might have dinged the match as well. But a rating 70 isn't too bad. I'm just hoping really, um, <laughs> I'm hoping we just get something ab above 65 overall for our, for our final score. Let's see what we get. 68. Oh, yeah, it's not fantastic. But yeah, I mean, it is above the 65. But I'm really, I've got to be looking at getting above 70 now. Uh, the TV station Gala are still unhappy with our ratings. We, we changed our time slot to make it easier on ourselves, and we're still not even getting getting what we should be getting. I think 65 is the limit, so I think we're safe for this week, but, yeah, it's not it's not brilliant. We are still struggling with storylines, according to this. I mean, I don't know how. I mean, I think we're, we're only just off the mark. I think there's one... We need five storylines at 65 or above, and I think we've got four storylines, and the fifth is at, like, 62 or 63 or something. So we're not far, but, I mean... Yeah, the one of the frustrating things for me is the NWO storyline has got, you know, most of our main eventers. And that doesn't help because in an ideal world, and this is probably one one of the other reasons why I don't use stables often, you know, in an ideal world, they would all be in their own individual stories. And that, that adds to the number of stories that you're going to get high ratings on, right? That's my That's my thinking anyway. But it is what it is. Next up, it will be Super Brawl. Um, just one little quick note. I've recorded this episode before the last one's gone up. Because I'm struggling a little bit now with time, I'm kind of recording as and when I can. And if that means I have to get one recorded before you guys have seen the last one, then so be it. I just, I just, you know, I need to sort of record as and when I can now, really, and sort of get ahead of myself. After I've recorded this, I'm probably going to go straight ahead and book Super Brawl. <laughs> and then record that as well. So I might start getting a few episodes ahead. I don't think it's a massive problem. It just means any advice that you guys give me or ideas you guys give me might just be a little bit out of date by the time you um, by the time you come to watch it. I'm going to try to stick to one a week, but when I'm when I'm in this mood and I'm really motivated to to record lots, I want to do it. So, yeah, there's there's that little note there. Other than that, I think this is it. As I say, next up will be Super Brawl. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Please give a like and subscribe if you have. Thank you to everyone so far who has watched and you know liked and subscribed and all that. Absolutely love it. And I'll see you all again soon. Take care. Goodbye.